Hello, and welcome to today's City Club Forum. My name is Ralph Delarada, and it's my pleasure this year to serve as president of the City Club of Cleveland. Established in October of 1912, the City Club has served as one of the nation's premier public podiums for civic dialogue, covering the most pressing topics of our time. Our guest speakers, rich in experience and knowledge, are here to spur discussion and learning among the citizens of Cleveland, as well as to our national audience. Our speaker today is Dr. Hank Tenhave, a widely respected figure in the medical ethics field. Dr. Have joined UNESCO, or the United Nations Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organization, in 2003 as director of the Division of Ethics of Science and Technology. He has expertly debated issues such as euthanasia, drug addiction, genetics, healthcare choices, and resource allocation. Additionally, Dr. Have has been a founder and director of the Department of Ethics, Philosophy, and History of Medicine at the University Medical Center, Nijmegen, the Netherlands, since 1991. <clears throat> this department has an expanding program of research on ethical issues relating to the biomolecular life sciences and end-of-life care. Dr. Have also played a role in founding a European Master in Bioethics program in cooperation with universities in Belgium, Switzerland, and Italy. In addition to discussions on pressing ethical issues, Dr. Have has focused his research on issues in palliative care and has served as coordinator of palliative care ethics, a project funded by the European Commission. Dr. Have further imparts his knowledge by serving on numerous editorial boards acting as editor-in-chief of professional journals such as Medicine, Healthcare, and Philosophy, and serving as secretary of the European Society for Philosophy of Medicine and Healthcare, which he also co-founded. Dr. Havé's prolific career includes recent books including Palliative Care in Europe, Concepts and Policies, Bioethics in a European Perspective, Ethics and Alzheimer's Disease, and Death and Medical Power, an Ethical Analysis of Dutch Euthanasia Practice. Dr. Heve also published several works on ethics with UNESCO and had, has, his, has had his research and articles published in the Journal of Medical Ethics, Journal of Interprofessional Care, and the British Medical Journal, among others. Dr. Heve studied medicine and philosophy at Leiden University, the Netherlands, and received his medical degree there in 1976 and his philosophy degree in 1983. In our age of exponential progress in the biological, metal, medical, and technological fields, ethical issues are as important as ever, maybe now more important than ever. Dr. Have has extensive experience on bioethics and will be able to explain how his field can help us solve issues that we are facing today. Ladies and gentlemen, it is truly an honor for me to introduce such a fascinating and admired figure. Please join me in welcoming, welcoming Dr. Hank Tenhave to the City Club. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for the opportunity to speak here in the prestigious City Club. On the topic of bioethics, I want to address the question, why do we need bioethics? And I will do that from my background uh, uh, working in an international organization, UNESCO. And you may wonder why, with all the criticism of the UN system, why is a UN organization working in the field of bioethics? UNESCO is working in three areas, education, science, and culture. And the member states of UNESCO, practically all the countries in the world, they have decided six years ago that ethics of science is a priority <coughs> one of the priorities of the organization. So it illustrates how important bioethics nowadays has been become that international organizations are interested in working in this area. Now for countries like Holland and the US, probably it's not necessary that international organizations are working in bioethics because they already have a lot of activities going on. They have infrastructures, 
they have experts, they have committees, they have legislation, and the population is quite aware of the rights that it has in this area. But remember that we have 193 member states in UNESCO, and the majority, maybe 140, 150 countries, they don't have the facilities, the infrastructure we have. There's no legislation, there are no experts, limited amount of teaching, and perhaps some years ago you have seen the movie The Constant Gardener. It was a movie about a drug trial in Kenya. And there were experiments done in Kenya that would never have been allowed in our country. And it could be done in Kenya because there was no expertise, no legislation, no regulation, no committees. And since the movie, nothing has changed. There still is no legislation, there is no national ethics committee. And this is one of the reasons why our organization is asked to look into the area of bioethics. Now, in doing that, you can ask the question, what is bioethics? And then already you run into trouble, because you see that in the diversity of all the countries that we have in UNESCO, bioethics has a different meaning. In our country, and in your country, here, Bioethics is related to the progress in medicine and healthcare. It, you can easily mention all the issues in the debate, end-of-life care, abortion, uh, those kind of issues, transplantation. So the relation is of ethical issues and healthcare and medicine. But in many other countries, they have a different perception of bioethics. In Latin America, they say bioethics is related to justice issues, to social issues, to the quality of social life. And bioethics actually started earlier than it started here. It started after the war, because medical doctors were involved, cooperating with military regimes, involved in torture. And there was a protest against that, rethinking the ethics of medicine and healthcare. But it's more related to human rights and social justice, which is a more socially oriented conception of bioethics. And if we go to Asia, then they still have another conception of bioethics, and they say, well, bioethics is my bio, is life, but why is it only focusing on human life? Why is it not focusing on animals, on nature, on the cosmos as a whole? So bioethics should include environmental issues, should include animal issues, so that in fact it's covering all life and not only focusing on human life. That's still another conception of bioethics. So in UNESCO, when we were asked to work in the area of bioethics, it was impossible to give a definition of bioethics. But what we notice is that there is also a development in bioethics. Here, we have bioethics since 40 years. In many countries, it is in different stages of development. But what you notice nowadays is that there is a tendency to broaden up the field of bioethics. Also in, in our country, uh, it's going beyond issues of medicine and healthcare because people become aware that we need to focus on social issues and environmental issues if we are concerned with bioethics. And the reason is that science itself, medical science itself, is more and more internationalized. We do research for drugs that we need, but the research is done usually in other countries than ours. There is an increasing tendency to, to outsource research and trials to developing countries so that they have trials with medication that is focused on our problems, not on their problems. So they say, well, what is the ethical debate? Is the ethical debate focusing on how to do research for problems that we have in the West and for diseases that we have in the West, develop medication and using people in developing countries to test the medication? Or should we perhaps focus in on questions like what are the problems in developing countries and how can we do research focused on the problems they have in their countries, the diseases they have, and they are different. So you need to take into account with the internationalization of medical research, the increasing social context of medicine and healthcare. The same perhaps for the environmental issues. 